Suffolk, an unchanging image of rural England. But it is also home for one of the largest concentrations of American military on foreign soil. 18,000 US citizens at the bases of Mildenhall and Lakenheath. This film is about life in the villages around the perimeter fence. At the weekend, you find anything up to well over 100 people, ranging from what they call number crunches with the aircraft spotters, through to photographers like ourselves who come along here to watch and photograph the aeroplanes. You also find a terrific amount of uh, families out watching the planes in summer, but not quite so many people in winter on a day like this when it's uh, bitterly cold and the wind's blowing from straight off the North Sea. Only mad idiots like us come out to see the planes on such an occasion as this. Some people have now invested in various forms of radio which can be used to monitor the airways frequencies and give a little bit of advance warning of when aircraft are coming in. It's quite useful, especially if you want to take photographs and get in the right place at the right time. Well, I've been interested in aeroplanes and taking photographs for ever since I was almost born. Mother said it was always in me from the early age. And I've been in around photographing aeroplanes at Mildenhall for nigh on 20 odd years. We've probably got somewhere in excess of 40,000, though I wouldn't exactly like to uh, add them all up. My aim is to try and photograph every individual aircraft that exists. I'm my family album. Over there. Norden Hoy is used as a tanker base. There are also transport and reconnaissance aircraft based here. Uh, Lakenheath is, uh, is the home of the 48th Tactical Fighter Wing. They have F 111Fs. Their mission is deep strike. They went to Libya. Five and a half thousand miles round trip, very successfully. They could also go over the Urals and deliver instant sunshine to the Warsaw Pact if necessary. Into this farm we came in 1932, but uh, we've been in the area since, uh, well, I've traced the family back to 1795. We've lived and farmed uh, around here ever since. That was completely agricultural, uh, of course, around here uh, when I was young. With the aerodrome taking so much of the land, uh, there's less farms. Uh, farm has become, become more mechanised, so there's less labour needed. I don't think there's any local opposition to the Americans. Uh, there might be a touch of resentment here and there, but most of it blows over. There are the occasional ups and downs, but as in any two societies trying to live together, but usually we all tend to get on all right. I think most of the village people appreciate the fact that they put a great deal of money into the, the uh, local community, either directly or indirectly, for everyone benefit from them being here. Girls from Florida. I'm Julie. And I'm Jennifer. I'm Lois, and I'm from Southern California, where it's still warm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Terry, and I'm from Oklahoma. Hi, I'm Becky, and I'm from Utah. And I'm Terry, and I'm from the land of dynasty, Denver, Colorado. <laughs>
boy. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Would like to have some donuts? What kind would you like? Plain ones? Jelly ones? Or some nice chocolate jelly jam ones? Oh. Yeah, we would like about 20, so we'll take about five chocolates. Yes. Five glaze. Uh, well, let's try some of the, uh, the jelly ones, too. OK. In Lake and Heath, we are very popular with our donuts. We have jelly-filled ones, plain ones, and we also do a very special donut for the Americans, which is a chocolate cream jelly donut. Uh, we have one gentleman who comes in from the base who has about 40 to 50 a day. But the only problem is, with the dollar uh, slowed in as it is at the moment, it is actually crucifying sales as regards the donuts. What Americans are looking for when they buy a car in this country because of the tax savings, as high a specification as possible with automatic seat belts, leather seats, full air conditioning, turbos, sports cars. We use cars as pure transport. They use cars as a status symbol. Now, if you turn the ignition on, you're going to see how the seat belt works. Completely automatic, you have another lap belt you can pull over. Okay. okay. Now, you also have automatic air conditioning, completely automatic. You see the two switches underneath the display? Yeah. What's the max temperature on the uh, heating system? About 95. Right. Oh, yes, I, uh, not some uh, awful drivers. Uh, a nephew of mine, uh, there was a bang on his door one Saturday night at uh, half past 11, and an American said he'd uh, run his car in the ditch, would he pull him out with his tractor? So uh, away he went, pulled him out, and he's very grateful. He said, uh, how much do you owe him? He says, oh, we didn't want any money for that. Uh, he said, well, I'll bring you a couple of bottles of whiskey. Of course, that, he didn't see any more of them. Didn't expect to for him. Fortnight late, around 11 o'clock on the Saturday night, there was another bang on his door. The same American stood there, asked if he'd gone pull him out again. He gave a rather rude reply. <laughs> if they flew the same way they drove, the locals would be extinct. <laughs> Jimmy, if you'd like to sign on the bottom. OK, right here. Uh-huh. OK. Congratulations. Thank you. The car is all yours. You take their cars or scrap a lot of cars from them there, buy product of the Americans. Most Americans there are, you know, basically good drivers there, but they're just not used to our roads and, you know, which are lanes compared to their, you know, motorway sort of thing. And, Plus, they tend to go too fast. They treat it as if they are big motorways still. Yeah, the Americans, they blend in well with the British there. You know, we rely on them, on them for a lot of our trade. Without them there, this place would be a, you know, a dead loss there. And it'd be just mainly farmland again, the farming community.
make the flat top cone. We get the head reasonably, you must hold it reasonably level. And we insert the flat top cone through the hair, just like this. And head back. You know, the flat top and the chewing gum, that's what we remember them by. All flat top and chewing gum. make sure that the bubble in the spirit level is dead on. And you just cut off the certain of hair. Now just hold there just a minute. Two degrees down with the side bones. Absolutely boomer now. It seems everybody wants a flat top. Just like they wanted the skinhead when the skinhead was in, you see. It's booming now on the on the British market. Well, I think your grandson's gonna be a bit disappointed. Are you will when you see this tonight. That'll be a surprise. Well he's the one that caused it, isn't he? <laughs> he come home with that, so I thought, well, I should have one of them. That's a must. Comfortable. I find it a lot better than having long hair. I think it's grace is quick. You should feel a bit younger now? Yes, definitely. 10 to 15 years ago. Go ahead, like a spring lamb. I think I was born on the wrong side of the Atlantic, basically. Isn't it? I don't know really why I'm so wrapped up in an American way of life, but it, it does appeal to me. It's just one of those things. It's uh, when you hear Glenn Miller, you get goose pimples down your back. You know? The van is um, well, 99% authentic. It, it, it's a Chevrolet van. It's painted in the olive drab colours of the um, NATO green. It's it, it's, it's left-hand drive. It, it's identical to other Chevy vans used on the base. I wanted to join the Royal Air Force, but due to eye defects, I couldn't fly. Um, and obviously, I couldn't join the US Air Force because of that. But now I find that they've got wizard operators on flying F-111s that wear glasses, which, you know, is great. But I, I would love to actually be able to be in one of the airplanes, on the F-111. And I feel that working out of Milden Hall and Lakenheath, it's sort of the nearest thing that one can get in the UK to actually being an American. This is the stock that I carry for the US Air Force. This is all my business stock for different squadrons. Stickers. This one for the F-111 and the Sink Trophy winner. Um, one of the things they like most of all is the T-shirt, which I did for the 492nd that won the Commander-in-Chief Best Fighter Squadron in New Safi in 1986, which is this one. And particularly, we did this coffee mug after the Libyan raid, which has a 48th Tactical Fighter Wing on the front, and on the back, it has F-111s fly low and fast, ask any Libyan. El Dorado Canyon, 15th of April, which is the code name for the mission. To date, we've sold over 9,000 of these coffee mugs, six of which have gone to the Pentagon. We also did for them a patch which the um, air crew can wear in their flying suit, which is F-111 Libyan Urban Renewal. Obviously, from my point of view, Libya was a particularly interesting time. The amount of activity that took place on the base, a number of aircrafts that were brought into the base and actually took off on that particular evening in April, was far greater than we would normally expect. Uh, I think there was a feeling of apprehension that the Libyans might try and retaliate in some way. Um, they thought it was very strange that the Americans could actually go out and bomb someone after living here peacefully for 30 years. I didn't take so much notice of it probably as Nicholas. He was more concerned than I. Uh, but we noticed the base deserted after they'd all gone, of course, and then the noise uh, uh, tended to upset the pigs a bit. Yeah, well, from my point of view, I suppose it's the first ever time that I've actually been able to watch a war for real. Although it was happening 3,000 miles away, the other side of the Mediterranean. From this end, the aeroplanes are taking off and coming back, while literally while I slept. 
that uh, in the last couple of years, with the terrorist activities that have taken place around American bases throughout the world and the Libyan raid, the fences have risen in height considerably. This is largely due to the fear of terrorists incursion into the base and also uh, due to the amount of vandalism carried out by CND of, re of recent times. It's made photography more difficult. The fence strands are much thicker and, and closer together. The fence is higher and as a result they've also fenced off more areas so there are less aircraft to get near now. Uh, I don't know if this SR-71 is ever going to get airborne either. I've been waiting here for all day without the thing having gone up. It's too cold. Oh, I don't know about you but I think it's time we went to Mickey's tea bar for a coffee. Yeah. I, I came from Cyprus in 1937 and I joined the British Army. Then I remained until 1950 and when I heard the Americans were coming into Milton Hall, I moved in and I built a tea bar. But that's not good enough. See, they wanted coffee. So I said to them one day, I said, boys, I said, when you Rome, do as the Romans do. I said, now you are in England, you got to start drinking tea. So I started selling them cups of tea and sandwiches and uh, they became tea drinkers. Well, we're right in the middle of the base and we're the landmark of the base. Now the Americans using the tea bar now as a landmark. They say, hey, go down to make his tea bar, turn right, 100 yards, turn left again, and you find our library. And then the, uh, then the NCOs and the NCOs club. And so they're still using it as a, as a landmark. And, uh, I mean, I, I did really watch, watch Milton Hall base grow so fast and so quickly. It's almost a little American now. I, I, I don't know, sometimes I think, what am I seeing? Uh, am I in the States or am I here? Actually, in fact, a housewife, and it is a rather unusual job for me, perhaps, but I enjoy doing it. It's a good part-time job. Um, it's exciting. You meet lots of people. You certainly get about, and you have some good nightlife as well. <laughs> there are about four or five different agencies, and um, I think it's because of the Americans, really, that it's made the business boom. This is a police lady's outfit. Very popular. This is the maid's outfit. I use this one quite a lot for restaurants, hotels. It comes with a feather duster. But the most popular one of all, especially with Americans, because they do love kissograms, and it's the leather gear. Boots, gloves. And also, we have a whip, which does come in very handy sometimes. But tonight, on request, I'm going to use the nurse's outfit. It's very good. It's very cheeky, actually. It's one of my favourites, too. And it goes down very well with the Americans. I don't know what it is, whether they like my injection or the vitamin pills. Comes with a little hat, a couple of bandages, some vitamin pills, and a good old syringe. And give them a quick squirt if they need it. There should be plenty of champagne there anyway. Yeah, it should be quite good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 35 quid for about 20 minutes then. 
don't meet many of them a week, do you? I've done a private right up to a general in the Americans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'd sooner do that than drive a cab, really. I doubt if it'd give me 35 quid a week, would it? Right. That's 180, please. Oh, lovely. Thank you. I'll see you in about 20 minutes. I'll come okay. back, all right? Yeah, fine. Well, I'm an agricultural mechanic and, uh, I live at Soham, near Ely, and uh, Janet also, she works at the pack house, but on the same estate. The square dancing is, is, is originally an English dancing thing, and uh, I think what happened that the, when the English people went to America, they took it to America, and the Americans have refined it and brought it back. In, in, in the week, in, uh, in between the Sunday and the Saturday, there isn't a great deal to do in this area. And, and it's nice to be able to come down here and, and, and come to the entertainment like this. And, and sometimes, even weekends, we dance on the bases when there's a big dance on in this area. Normally, if there's a big square dance on, it is put on on one of the bases, either Hilton or Lakenese. We do actually dance on both of them. Living next to the base, don't cause me a lot of problems. I'm not really, you know, it's, um, they're just playing the game, aren't they? It's uh, seen as being necessary for defence. I don't see personally how you can use bombs like that and survive, but it's one of the things, it's part of the game, it's us against them. So we're told. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his house. Bravo. exercise alarm black. Now we copy, thank you. Well, as you can see on the base, there are vehicles driving up and down with black flags and the tannoys are an announcing an alarm black. This, in fact, means that the base has suffered a nuclear attack. At the moment, inside the base, they're probably suffering, in theory, several thousand degrees due to uh, radiation. But uh, due to the wonders of modern science, just the other side of this fence, it's freezing cold. I'm one of a number of people, a small number of people, unfortunately, in this area, who are concerned about the future of the area as it is in relation to the military bases around here. I look upon this as a garrison town. The, the economy of this area is, is very much dependent on, upon the base, but most of the input into that economy actually comes from housing. Um, the effect being at the moment that house prices are inflated beyond the means of the local people. A house can be rented or can be let in this area for a thousand pounds a month. One room will cost you in this area what it would cost in central London. These are the silos where nuclear weapons are kept and these are on my doorstep. Um, I have no control over what happens that side of the fence, nor does the British government, nor do any local authority. I have two main worries. 
First, that the people seeing that themselves and the area so dependent upon the bases economically, um, they are blinkered to any future without the bases. And secondly, what worries me is that people are unaware of just how much military control um, the bases would have in this area should there be a crisis when the Americans, by agreements with the British government, will be taking over the whole of this area. And we will be confined to our houses, confined to wherever we are, with no control or knowledge of what is going on. My view of the base and the American presence here is that taking the Libya raid as an example, they are very dedicated, skilled and professional people. And uh, it sometimes upsets me when I find that there are CND demonstrations taking place around the bases. If it wasn't for the NATO defences, people wouldn't have the opportunity to freely express their speech and their views.